I've been using the OnePlus 7 Pro camera for about two weeks now, so I wanna share with you my real world experience with this camera after two weeks. And I think the triple camera system is a nice upgrade from the OnePlus 6T because now you get that standard field of view, the ultra wide angle field of view, and then you also get that three times optical zoom. So I wanna talk about the things that I was impressed with, some things that I hope to see fixed with future software updates and give you some real world pictures and video from the OnePlus 7 Pro camera so you know what to expect when you pick one up. The first trip that I took this phone to was Google I.O. It was my first I.O. so I was really excited. Couldn't wait to test the camera so I was taking a ton of pictures. After looking over a ton of the shots from the main sensor which is 48 megapixels with f1.6 aperture, these are going to give you the best results. I would say this is the strongest part of the triple camera system. By the way, all the shots that I'm gonna show you in this video are shot on full auto mode, completely untouched and straight out of the camera, but there is a pro mode, so you can tweak whatever values that you would like to get the best shot. And also there is raw capability, so you can have the ultimate flexibility in post-production. In bright day scenarios, like any other flagship phone, the images are nice and full of detail. There was one thing that I did notice that even with auto HDR on is that the colors are very natural and more on the flatter side of things. I did a full comparison with the Galaxy S10 Plus and that phone has a scene optimizer where it boosts saturation and contrast depending on the scene. So I don't blame people for liking a more ready to share picture right out of the camera but I've become a person that likes to edit the photos a little bit afterwards. So the flatter colors are my preference, but this is definitely personal preference on what type of processing that you like. Here are some shots from the Golden Gate Bridge. You can see exactly how far SAF was with this ultra wide. You can get that grand scheme of things with this lens. I think the ultra wide is the most useful smartphone lens that you can have on the back of your camera. You can at me if you want to. I think it should be on every smartphone. It's just that great. I used it all throughout IO, San Francisco, and in New York City during the launch of this phone. I had so much fun just going around taking shots of buildings. It just lets you capture a totally different perspective. The ultra wide on the OnePlus 7 Pro is not as wide as the one that's on the Galaxy S10 Plus. That still wins for the widest field of view, but it's a welcome addition and I think you'll love it. The one big downside for me is that you can't record video with the ultra wide camera. I'm sure that can be added later on, but at launch you can't do this. So I just wanted to let you know. You know, I can't do anything camera without going to Disney. I took some wide angle shots here too to really capture the park. So having that field of view is great when you're on vacation. And it's also a really good way of testing the 3X zoom. It's eight megapixels. And there are some pictures that you can get with the 3X zoom that you can't get with the 2X zoom. So I really did enjoy this, but I did wish it was higher in resolution for a little bit more detail. These shots aren't bad by any means, but it could use a little bit more resolution, maybe a 12 or 16 megapixel. For the most part, I've gotten really good results, but there are some mixed opinions online, especially with your favorite reviewers. So I wanna clear some things up and then talk about some of the things that I think that they can improve with future software updates. After looking at a lot of these pictures, I would like to see better edge to edge sharpness. I'm noticing that in some of the corners, there seemed to be some softening and I would like to see improvements in the focusing as well on subjects. I feel like this also falls into the personal preference category because if you do look at images side by side with something like the Galaxy S10 Plus, it does look a lot sharper right out of the camera. You can just add sharpness in post to the OnePlus 7 Pro's camera and make it look very similar, but I think some people would prefer the sharpness to come right out of the camera. So I'm sure this can be easily fixed with a software update. I've taken hundreds of photos, so I know this camera is extremely capable because some shots come out really sharp and detailed. So you can see here that some of these images are absolutely stunning, while some have some issues with uniformity. So I would like to see a more consistent photo experience across different lighting conditions. Sometimes you get this rich, contrasted, and very colorful image just like this one and then sometimes you get a more washed image. So that's what I think other reviewers were complaining about. Here are a few more examples of where I think it could benefit from more contrast and where exposure could be better controlled. But OnePlus has done this in the past. They usually push a few large software updates that improve the camera quality that helps a lot in the life cycle of the OnePlus devices. So I'll be updating this video as soon as major ones are released so we can go back and revisit the camera. 
There is one advantage of that softer look that this camera produces, and that is in the portrait mode. I really like the soft textures it gives off. I think it gives it a more DSLR-like look. And even in low light, I think the portrait mode does a decent job. That 3X zoom portrait mode is really cropped though, so you will have to stand back pretty far to get these type of shots, and they will have to be pretty still, or it can get blurry. But my kids aren't the best subjects because they can't stay still for more than a few seconds. So I wanna talk about some of the things that I was really impressed with with the OnePlus 7 Pro. And the first is the video capability. The 4K 60 frames per second looks stunning from the phone. And I was really shocked at this concert and how great it captured the scene. There was no fluctuations in exposure, no ghosting, no crazy light bleeding. And this is just pure auto. After looking back at it, I was really shocked. Really good noise reduction. I know a lot of you asked for a more realistic audio sample, like loud concerts, so here you go. Here is what the mic capture sounds like. I saw a few comments on my last video talking about some of the other reviewers pointing out the funny colors that might be coming off the OnePlus 7 Pro video, and there's a pretty good explanation for that. So the OnePlus 7 Pro shoots in HDR, which is Rec 2020 colors, so that's not converted off the bat. So in some scenarios, you're gonna get really oversaturated skin and really, really exaggerated colors. So if you convert this video to Rec 709 color, which is what most displays are capable of playing, then the colors look fantastic, they're balanced, they're more neutral. So I am not saying that an average consumer should do this at all. I would love to see OnePlus make a toggle for this somehow and give you a choice of Rec 709 colors. Also, I was pretty shocked by the low light performance of the OnePlus 7 Pro. With the sensor having 48 megapixels and scaling them down to 12 megapixels, I was impressed with the noise reduction and the color replication. You get a nice balanced shot. I think it does really well, even against flagships like the Galaxy S10 Plus. Red is one of the tougher colors to capture on smartphones and the OnePlus does a great job. You can see all of this in my S10 Plus versus 7 Pro video, so I will leave it linked down below. The Nightscape mode does capture a lot more detail on certain shots, but in certain scenarios, handheld shots with Nightscape can be hard because it takes so many exposures, you can end up with some blurry ones too, so that's something that I would like to see them improve on. But low light is a nice strength on the OnePlus 7 Pro. It's not perfect though, it could use some improvement. In certain lighting conditions, the noise reduction becomes a little too aggressive and it can smoothen out things, especially when it comes to skin tones. So I would like to see that improved in the future. The last thing I wanna talk about is the pop-up selfie camera. And I think the Pixel 3 literally ruined all smartphones when it comes to front-facing camera shots and selfies. But this is the thing that I think that OnePlus needs to improve on the most when it comes to the camera. Here are a few examples. This is not the worst front-facing camera that I have seen and it's capable of taking some decent selfies, but it needs work with exposure, contrast, and sharpness overall. I personally don't shoot a lot of selfies, so this really doesn't matter to me much, but I know for some of you, a front-facing camera can be a deal breaker, so I hope we get an update to this very soon. I want to wrap up my experience like this. Is this the best camera system out there right now? No. But is OnePlus that much closer to competing with flagship cameras? Yes. The hardware is absolutely incredible. The price is fantastic at $669. So when you are looking at side-by-side -side images with something like the more expensive Galaxy S10 Plus, yes, those images are better, but how much better? Are they $300 plus better? I've shared some blind camera comparisons on Twitter, so you should check those out. And the response is a lot closer than you would imagine. And the low light photography is surprisingly good. So not saying the OnePlus camera is quite a flagship killer yet, but they're going in the right direction. So I'm hoping with more software updates and moving in the future, they will improve to come straight out of the gate, competing directly or even beating out flagships. I would love to see it OnePlus. Let's see what you got. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think about the OnePlus 7 Pro as a whole and what you think about the OnePlus 7 Pro camera. And I think that this camera has been getting a lot of heat lately. I think it's kind of undeserved, but 
It is a very competitive space out there and there are a ton of flagship cameras out there that are pumping out some incredible images and even some mid-range ones that are kicking out some incredible images. So I think that's the reason why we're just in such a competitive climate right now. So let me know what you think about this phone. There's a lot more stuff coming with the OnePlus 7 Pro, full camera comparisons, full reviews. Make sure you subscribe for that and thumbs up if you enjoyed this experience and I will see you guys in the next one.